today's video, we're going to talk about actually how we look and think about setting a car up. So we're gonna watch the first lap through in its entirety. And then we're gonna talk about how you actually begin to understand where you should go with setup in sim racing, i racing in this case, because it is an area where I see a lot of drivers going wrong and uh, it's actually quite a difficult thing to get right. So we're just watching this lap just to understand how the car is reacting if the driver's driving consistently. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm actually watching the steering wheel and the pedal trace just so I can make sure that the, the driving technique, first of all, is good. Um, it looks pretty good so far. It was a little bit ragged at the beginning of the lap. Um, and then beyond that, I'm looking to see what the steering wheel's actually doing. So if the driver's hacking away at the steering wheel, then on the corner entry, then that usually means that we've got oversteer, we've got rotation on the entry, which means that we've got a problem at the rear. And if we can see extra steering lock being added through the corner, then that usually points to understeer. Um, having said that, it all looks pretty good so far, but let's just watch uh, this remainder of this lap and the next lap just to see where we are in terms of, um, in terms of the balance of the car, because that's typically what we're looking for here. So really pay attention this time to the throttle and the, and the brake trace. So hard on the brakes, easing up now, releasing, just trail braking deep into the corner there. All looks pretty good. Much tidier through this first section on this lap. You could see that it was trail braking nice and deep into the corner, but you could also see that he was pausing a little bit on the steering wheel because he wanted the rear of the car to settle down. Watching the braking again, trail braking in. Again was not hacking away at the wheel, but he was floating with the steering wheel there because he was waiting for the rear of the car to settle down. So I think that we could actually look at sorting out the rear of the car just a little bit so that we can uh, enter the corner a little bit more quickly. And then on the first lap, I did notice actually that in some of the slower corners, he was getting some understeer from mid corner to exit. So we'll go back and look at those once this lap is complete. Again, you can see the trail braking as he was entering the corner there. Lines all look very good. How he loads the car up with the steering is all good. We're, we're looking to make sure that the driving technique, first of all, is nice and consistent because if the driving technique isn't consistent, if your racing line isn't consistent and the platform of the car isn't consistent, then we can't change setup because there's too many variables. You need to get the driving technique and the racing line perfect every lap before you even consider making setup changes. So that's the first thing that we should really look at. So let's go back to this first lap and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail this time. So coming into turn one here, you can see if you watch the steering wheel at this point, you can see that is he's floating at the steering wheel. It isn't, I would call this a hack, you know, working the steering wheel really hard. He's not doing that. He's the, the quality of this driver who's been through our masterclass training program, um, his quality is very good. And so he's not fighting the steering wheel, but as you can see, he's waiting just here. You can see that small correction there. He's waiting, and again, just there, he's waiting for the rear of the car to settle down, which could mean that the rear doesn't have enough grip on corner entry. So that's the first point and his trail braking in. So the first thing to try there would be to actually try and trail brake a little bit less and see if you can get rid of this imbalance um, through technique rather than changing setup. So at the moment the car's going in, the, the, the nose is all loaded up, the rear's a little bit light and it's got that oversteer. So if you tried to trail brake a little bit less just to allow the front to release just a fraction, then he might be able to carry a little bit more speed in. Then, from the mid corner here, watch the steering wheel here. So this is about the right steering angle for the trajectory that we're on, for the racing line that we're on. But as I step it forwards a little bit, you can see that he adds more steering angle here and the car's actually gone into understeer. Now, it's all well and good just looking at the steering wheel, but we also need to look at the, the, the throttle or the pedal trace here. So you can see that the understeer actually where does it begin? It begins when he picks up the accelerator. You can just see there 
that as he gets on the throttle, he then winds more steering angle into the car. And this is what you're looking for. You're looking for what input, whether that's the brake, the brake release, the throttle, or the steering, which input is triggering the imbalance in the car. And so for this, it's when he gets on the throttle. So what is the car doing when he gets on the throttle? Well, actually, it, the rear of the car will be squatting down a little bit. The weight will be moving backward. And so we probably want to stiffen the rear of the car, whether that's with the springs or the damping, just so that the rear of the car doesn't quite squat down as much when he gets on the throttle and it retains some of the grip in the car. These changes that I'm talking about are specific to the phase of the corner. Now that sounds a little bit complex, but you have two types of changes with setup. The first one is a global setup change. So it's a change that will affect the car during every phase of the corner. So that's when you're turning it in, when you're at the apex and when you're at the exit. So uh, an example of a global change is the ride height. So if you change the ride height, imagine you bring the rear ride height down, you're essentially moving grip to the rear of the car because you're putting more load through those rear tires. That will affect the car through entry, apex and exit. However, a spring or a damper change will only affect the car on entry or exit. So imagine that we stiffened the rear suspension up, the, 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 the springs at the rear more in this instance coming into this corner. Well, if the rear st springs are stiffer, they won't compress as much when you get on the accelerator pedal, meaning that the front will retain more grip. Going into the corner, the car dives and, uh, and the front drops down. It doesn't really matter how stiff the rear springs are. However, then when you get back on the accelerator pedal, the rear spring is the thing that controls the dynamics of the car and so it will affect the car on the corner exit. So that's the difference between a global change and a, and a phase specific change in that we have a little bit more kind of accuracy that the change is a little bit more specific to that particular phase of the corner. So as we run the car forwards a little bit, you can see here with the extra steering angle, he's getting a little bit of uh, understeer there on the exit. Again, it could be because of the rear of the car or the car's kind of going quick enough there that the aero will start to work. So obviously in the slower corners, the aerodynamics aren't as effective as they are in a quicker corner. This is third, fourth gear as you're coming out of here. So it would be that the aero is starting to work. So if you're picking up understeer in only quick corners, then you would wanna make a change to the front wing or the rear wing to change the balance in the car. Just gonna run around the rest of the lap here very quickly because of the few things that I want to point out. So heading down the first straight here, hit the limiter, but that's not too much of a problem. Easy fix. Again, I could see that there was a pause on the steering wheel here. So he's just having, just at that point, they're having to wait for the rear to settle down. So again, we need to try and transfer some grip on entry to the rear of the car. And then again, a little bit more steering angle, mid corner with a, a fraction of understeer mid corner, but then actually it settles down on the exit. So that was pretty good. I would just say on the corner entry, we need to, to have a think about that. Come into, into the double right here. Car's pretty stable there. Can't really see too much going on. Pausing on the entry there, you can see that pause in the steering wheel. And then we've got understeer again from the mid corner. So definitely we're starting to see patterns across the lap. And this is what you need to look for when you're working on setup. Look for patterns across the lap and see what is the biggest setup issue that you should try and address next. If you're just working on one specific corner, you may improve the car in that one corner, but it may ruin it around the rest of the lap. So you need to look for patterns and you need to look for the most common setup issue. Again, we've got some mid corner understeer just here. Again, just waiting for the front before we get on the throttle properly. Bit of mid corner understeer there. Let's have a look into the final section of the lap here. Watch the steering wheel. Paused again on the entry. Apex exit looks all right there. 
and away we go. So if I was engineering this driver, I would say that we need to try to sort the car out, first of all, um, on the entry, because the biggest issue that I can see there is that the rear is a little bit light on the entry. So we can do that in a number of ways. We could stiffen the front springs up so that it doesn't dive quite as much when we're entering the corner. Or we could stiffen the front bump damping up so that, again, the car doesn't dive quite as much when you get on the brakes and enter the corner. Therefore, giving some more grip to the rear of the car. That would be my first step. And another thing that we should do with setup is only make one change at a time so you can have a direct back-to-back -back comparison. And make sure you check out these other videos where I go over sim racing driving technique to make you faster on track.